better known as that weirdo who dresses like a hag but secretly wants to be a demonologist. Yes, it's me, your old chum, YesterQuest, back with another Let's Recruit for Free, a unit which is more powerful than any of our own units despite us levelling them up the entire campaign, episode of Disciples 2, the Legions of the Damned campaign. Now, the one thing I want to do, uh, we're edging ever, ever so closely to uh, victory. Uh, but the one thing I do want to do first of all is get this guy leveled up our demon lord to a probably an abyssal devil then I think it's probably about time for us to think about drawing this 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 mission and all the campaign and the, indeed the the let's the let's play it itself to a close it's very sad I know it's been going on for about a year so far <laughs> with all my various breaks and um, and uh, absences so um, yeah, we're at the end of this. At the end of this turn, let's end this here, and then we'll pick things up uh, in the next couple of turns. On to the next turn, and the undead have been extremely foolish and sent out the uh, noob Hunra with a couple of fighters and <laughs> taking that right with them. So this is just too juicy an opportunity for us to pass up. So let's go straight in for the kill. If the white does the th same thing it did last time i.e. go for mango then we don't really have anything to fear from this or if we could go differently no it's still going for mango and misses as well just to uh, add insult to injury i'm gonna get our uh, warrior units to wait just to see what kind of damage the modius does hits everyone so we don't have to worry about the warrior leader and that should be the end of that yet another um, anticlimactic end to another another white it does manage to drain like mango's level so you did you did do something well done you contributed to nothing there we go. 103 experience. You would have thought it would you would get more considering the white is a top tier uh, unit. Oh well. It's not looking good for this ghost. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll say that now. It's looking even less optimistic optimistic for the ghost. So we've got both of these cities now, uh, with no immediate threat from the undead, their most powerful parties are now obliterated. Um, I thought I'd have some fun with the Empire and, and send in uh, Gurkha Nash to take this city, because we might as well use him uh, for that purpose. It's, it's a bit of an interesting party, I'll say that much. We've got a a mage travelling around with a fiend. It's obviously not as powerful as our fiend, it's just a level one. Um, it's not looking great for the orc. But at least we can have a swing at him. Okay, so that's... Yeah, about 120 damage to the to the dragon, and that's about it. 220 XP. Um, we're halfway there to his <laughs> his requirement for a level up, which is over 9,000. And we might as well keep going. Take the city. Can he kill everyone in one shot? Oh, yes he can. Lovely stuff. Alright, so we've got this city. And the benefits of that are twofold, really. Uther is back, demons! The Empire will prosper once more. He is a saint. I have witnessed his miracles. It seems that the Empire has fallen under the charms of Uther. They do not see him as he really is. Interesting. See him as some sort of Jesus type character. So yeah, we've took this city, which means we get this gold, and also the the, the ground from that Empire City is not reaching around here anymore. That will stop and then we will eventually get this life mana as well. So as I said, the effects are, are twofold. We get uh, two nodes for that. And I might just leave Gurkhanish there just to defend this city as well. Uh, I think everyone else has took their moves. So we're just moving them around just to 
strategically cover the map. Um, the thief is investigating this area. We've got a dwarven city there, which is rather well garrisoned. And then I suspect this is the final stretch. As you can see, that we've got a, a cliff going all the way along, and the only opening is here at the edge of the map. So this is where we're going to have to send Mango eventually in order to face off against Demon Uther. In an effort to grab us some much needed goldage, I've brought Bango pretty much all the way back to the capital really, just to have another investigation of the abandoned altar. I'm pretty sure that with our, our uh, let's face it, more experienced party we should be alright with this one. It's looking very much like that. Should, fingers crossed, be able to get um, rid of this troll before he attacks. I will now shut up before I attempt fit any further. <laughs> you might as well go for the orc then. Oh wow, no, this this orc's very slippery and um, is it seems to be evading all attacks at the moment. He's poisoned, that poison isn't going to be enough to kill him though. But now it should be. Okay, 132 XP. Not so bad at all. But how much gold? 800 gold, wow! Potion of celerity. <laughs> um, I think that was mainly the the gold that was the the best point of that. Uh, so that potion of celerity is not bad by any means, but 800 gold is um, puts us well on our way to getting the upgrade structure for the two space unit. It's been a fair few turns since uh, I've recorded anything, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a sit rep. Um, as you can see, we're amassing a, a reasonable amount of gold each turn now, so we're well on our way to get the uh, enough gold for the upgrade structure. We're also getting a reasonable amount of infernal mana. Uh, Mango has been traversing Greenskin Country, which is this kind of area. He's wiped out pretty much the entire population, and we're setting our sights on that city and probably this group. Um, in terms of what else is happening, not not a lot else. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we've got a couple of undead guys going around, and we've got the, the, they took that city, which is why we've got rods planted in order to preserve our resources. But not a lot. I mean, we've got the empire also battling with the dwarves down here. This dwarven um, party, as you would imagine, is absolutely demolishing everything which he comes into contact with. So. Yeah, the dwarves are coming in quite handy. But um, I'll stop recording again. I'll do a little bit more. We'll probably reconvene when we've got enough money to purchase the next up upgrade structure and then we'll plan our next moves. Because of a rather well positioned shop in which Mango sold uh, his body for a price I'm not willing to repeat, we've got enough money to buy our final upgrade structure which is looking like the unholy mansion for the abyssal devil fair enough we could go for the overlord again but for force i mean the overlord does have extra um damage but for forsaking an extra for forsaking an extra 30 damage we get the petrification type um aspect to the to the attack of the invert of the abyssal devil so i think that's worth it personally anyway can we now grab a little bit of experience for him to level up oh we can there's a goblin <laughs> it's always a goblin round when you need one. Oh, by the way we've located uh, a dragon in the form of this chap just a white dragon it doesn't have a name like gurgle gurgle lash or whatever his name is he seems to be guarding a tower, which may contain something rather juicy. Sorry, it's not a tower, it's an Odense. Whatever one of those is. Can he actually sneak past him? Oh, he can. Great. I mean, I don't know whether I'm uncultured or something like that, but what the hell's an Odense? I mean, so many of those different descriptions, I've absolutely no idea what, what, it, what it refers to or what, a, what that actual structure means. Anywho, let's quickly get this out of the way. I'm going to kill the Goblin Archer. For some reason, the Goblin Archers have a bit more sense and go after the Modius, which means that they are probably more intelligent than a, a White. So that is saying something. 
Ah, uh, there we have our Abyssal Devil. Uh, incidentally, um, I've not mentioned this yet, but we've uh, received another two levels for our Fiend. So he's now doing 123 damage <laughs> and a ridiculous 78 damage from his poison attack with 520 HP. So he's still hot on the heels of the Abyssal Devil. I mean, provided his poison actually hits, he's doing substantially more damage than the Abyssal Devil. So that's something. In terms of what everyone else is doing, I'm bringing Gurgle, Gurgle Bash down to this city, so he's within the vicinity of this uh, the Abyssal Gate. We've got our two Greed Brothers in this area just to take care of any Rod Planters coming too close, like so. I'm assuming they ran off, although we did manage to kill his fighter, uh, fighter unit. So that's what we're using these two guys for. The Demonologist will be taking Gurgle Snatcher's place, guarding this city. And then I think we're good. Oh, and this Rod Plant has just been uh, chased around the map, Benny Hill style, by this, the uh, undead party over there. So that's more or less it. Um, I'll probably cut to the next turn, where we'll... might be the next turn after this one. I'll take care of these two parties and then we might have a little bit of a face-off with this white dragon. Well, here goes nothing. In terms of the strength of the dragons... Which one do I need? Cursed Demonius, that's the one. Um, I th the green dragon is the easiest. Um, I think the, the black dragon, the one that we have control of, is quite possibly the strongest. I think the, the white dragon is somewhere in between. So, fingers crossed, we should be alright. I don't want to rely too much on our Abyssal Devil paralysing the dragon itself, but if he did, that would be very nice indeed. Let's have a quick look at him. The mythological white dragon is rare and beauteous sight. Some say that they live up to 3,000 years. Uh, wow, yes, that's a lot of damage. Uh, 110, reduced down by 16 to 94 instead. So that's going to be two hits, and the Mordius is dead, sadly. Kind of initiative but as he has 40. Right. I mean we're gonna do a lot of damage. But whether we can kill him before the Modius goes down, I'm not so sure. It is gonna be highly dependent on whether the Abyssal Devil paralyzes him and the, the actual turn order, I think. Oh, we've got uh, Petrify. Uh sorry, not paral paralysis, petrify. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah. It happens, he got petrified and poisoned at the same time. It's not going great for him. But it's going spectacularly well for us. And there we go. Took down a white dragon with no damage at all, no deaths. And a level up for the Mordius, he's up doing uh, up to 83 damage now. Fiend, yet another level up. Uh, 129 damage with 84 from the poison. Now the question remains, do we go for the Ordens as well? Are we feeling that cocky? That definitely wasn't me just quick saving. Let's go for it. I think we should be fine. I mean we've took we've took down quite a lot now. Oh, this is it. Yeah, that's uh not much of a problem at all, really. Uh let's go for the brown bear. They, they seem to be concent concentrating on mango quite a lot. On the last couple of battles. That should be the end of the giant. Uh, the bear will die because of the poison. There he goes. Such a huge amount of damage from the poison when it does actually hit. It's a shame it's such a, uh, such a low percentage to hit, but I guess that's the trade-off you have really for doing uh, what was it, 84 points of damage every turn with the poison. What you got for us? 500 gold and an etched circlet. Leader equipped with this item will receive 35% less damage from attacks. That was very much worth it. What do we get to replace it uh, with? 20% uh, less damage, 15% less damage. So at the moment, Mango is reducing all damage by 65%. If we put the etched circlet on, that's risen to 85% of all damage is reduced. Wow. That's pretty epic. So that went well. 
Um, I'm going to stop the recording as usual, and I think we'll probably convene when um, Mango is ready to enter the gauntlet, which would be this kind of area. Okay, for some reason we're already just getting some dialogue with the dwarfs now. Hail demons, we fight the same enemies. If you unite, we may together defeat them. Maybe it would be wise for us to use the clan armies against our enemies, master. That's kind of what we've been doing for the last uh, 30 odd turns, but uh, fair enough, let's just go with it. Let's just pretend that was the first chance we'd had to speak <laughs> with the, uh, the little half-men. So the, the coast is relatively clear now. We've um, emptied that area out that area and it's merely just uh, smooth sailing for Mango to get to the, what I'm calling the gauntlet area. So let's bring him round and we'll see what it's all about. He's got a fair few movement points left so let's just have a quick look around the place. That's that very scary dwarven army. I've also got another scary army down here, I think. Uh, oh, well, it's not quite as scary, but eh, it's reasonably fear-invoking. There's a demon, though. Uh, we don't have quite enough movement points, sadly. Uh, the, the rest of these... It's going to... Yeah, the rest of the enemies in this area are going to remain a bit of a mystery because they belong to the Empire. However, we don't have a spy within the Empire army, and I'm just having a quick look to see if there are any other Empire units in the area and it's looking like a no so we could potentially take this city recruit a thief send them out to um, slip a spy into their army we could use this thief actually so yeah that would be the cheaper option I suppose although we've got quite a lot of money now since we don't have to build any other upgrade structures the rest of the map is very much under control undead seem to pose no threat and of course we're allied with the dwarves so it, yeah it's it's looking like all we really need to do is just clear out this final stretch and then um, make our way towards the boss on to the next turn and let's have a quick peek see what's inside this army oh oh well that was hardly worth it was it is that poison going to kill him Ah, oh, it's exactly the, the amount of his health. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Oh, he missed though. So, it's, is it going to be death by poison? <laughs> nice. Exactly killed by poison. The best kind of death. Now, question is, are we going to see any interesting troops in this city? Or is it just going to be standard empire ones? Let's have a quick look. By quick look, let's kill them. Uh, oh, there would have been a paladin, but but he's dead. <laughs> it's just his remains on the floor there. Uh, let's just, everyone just ignore this. Let's pretend he fought valiantly. Okay, let's get rid of the damage dealer because, let's face it, that would, that would have been scary if he managed to pull off a lightning bolt on us. And there goes them lovely 22 experience and so we've got this city now leave at once Uther's angels shall defend us Uther's angels <laughs> you put your trust in mere illusions such as Uther's trickery wow talk about beating a man when he's down oh <laughs> all we did was empt uh, exit the city a fatal mistake. Your arrogance will destroy you, Astaroth. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Let's start that again. Your, <laughs> your arrogance will destroy you, Astaroth. Kill them. As your desire, Master. Now I thought he was he was threatening Astaroth for a moment there. Uh, for some reason, I, I for a moment believed that Astaroth was 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 within our <laughs> within our armies or something. I went a bit insane. I do apologise. Let's infiltrate a spy. Let's see what we've got in this one. An abyssal devil and a load of crap, essentially. So that's about it for this turn. Let's um, very quickly end our turn. And I think we'll do one more turn and then we'll wrap this episode up because it looks like, excuse me, it looks like we could probably um, pretty much wrap up the entire thing in the ne next episode. So yeah, I'll um, end this here and then we'll do one more turn.
on to the next turn and let's deal ourselves a little bit of revenge against these uh, demon infiltrators. This guy is a higher level. He's level 3. Woo! He does 170 damage instead. Wow. That is considerable. Although he is now poisoned, can we also petrify him? Taste of his own medicine. No, we can't. Can't even hit him. Now, the good thing about... Um... Oh, that is a lot of damage. And he's petrified, so the tables have turned. So the good thing about the Modius is that he's, he's, he's warded against fire damage. So the first attack from that sorcerer didn't do any damage against him, which is pretty nice. I think there's a possibility we can kill this guy if we both hit. Yep, because the poison will now finish him off. Or the Modius will now finish him off. <laughs> Whatever comes first. And that's another level up for the Fiend and 296 experience. Up to 132 damage with 87 from the poison. Now the, the paths do diverge somewhat here, so I'm not entirely sure which way to go. Because at some point Astroth is going to come for us. I suspect this is going to go, turn into a, a dead end. So I'm going to take this opportunity to bring Mango back. And I might get him to hold up here. Just until Astroth comes and attacks. Because I'm assuming because of that little bit of dialogue we had with uh, Uther. Astroth is coming for us. And he's not going to be happy about it. Because he's just got out of bed. So we might wait there and then take him on at the city and then go in for Ufa. Not too sure. We'll see how the next couple of turns pan out. But as for now, it's the end of this episode. So um, I will wrap things up here. And I'll see you for the next episode, which should be the grand finale. See you then, Questers.